Today we're going to show you how to make a no pattern bandana headband using fabric pieces that are smaller than a quarter yard. This is part of our scrap busting series where we show you all kinds of ways to use your leftover fabric scraps to make projects that are both beautiful and useful. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single scrap busting video. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Haley. Today, I want to show you my favorite pattern-free sewing project. Now, if you were around during the late 90s or the early aughts, you might remember this little hair accessory. And if I'm being totally honest, I've been waiting for it to come back around into the trend cycle. So my final question for you is, are you ready to unlock your inner Lizzie McGuire? If so, let's make a bandana. So to sew this project, you're just gonna need a few supplies. You'll want some fabric scraps. These can be big or small. You'll also want some ribbon or twill tape and then some thread. Plus you'll need your regular old sewing kit. So ruler, tape measure, all of that good stuff. So let's jump into creating our bandana. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your tape measure and we're gonna take a little measurement of our head. I like this project because you can make it for any head size. So I'm going to measure from the bottom of my ear, wrap around the top of my head and then measure to the other side, kind of bottom of earlobe level. And that measurement on me is 18 inches. This will vary depending on your head size. It'll vary depending on how much hair you have and the texture of your hair. So don't go based off my measurement, take your measurement. So next I'm gonna draft my pattern. I know I said this is sewing pattern free, but I plan on making multiple versions of this. So I'm gonna draft it on paper, but if you're just gonna make one, you can totally just draw straight on your fabric. So now I have my paper, my ruler, and I'm gonna draw a line that is the same length as that measurement I just took of my head. I like to draw a little hash mark at either end for myself. And then I'm gonna find the center point of that line. So for me, that's at nine. And you'll draw a line perpendicular to that first line at the center point, like so. So now you have a big, capital T. Next thing I want to do is I want to create the right angle portion of our bandana. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this central line as a guide and I'm moving at a 45 degree angle. And I can tell that it's a 45 degree angle because it's intersecting the one inch marks on my ruler. And you can use a plain two inch ruler as well. A wider ruler is a little bit easier though. So I'm moving this down the line until I intersect the end of my first line. Once I find that point, I'm gonna draw a line and then I draw my second line. So this is the base shape of my bandana. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna draw a little extension and this extension is going to be to accommodate my ribbon. So you'll wanna measure the width of your ribbon. I have this quarter inch twill tape that I'm gonna be using. So I'm going to draw a quarter inch extension. So basically that is really fancy way of saying, I'm going to draw a line that is parallel to my first line and a quarter inch away. And then just square it up at the ends. My little hash marks are kind of doing the work for me already. All right, this is our core shape. Now I'm just gonna go around and add seam allowance to this entire shape. I'm gonna sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can sew with whatever seam allowance that you're comfortable with. Just make sure that you are matching that on your pattern piece. Okay, here is my finished pattern piece. You can go ahead and cut that out and then I'm going to cut it out of my fabric as well. All right, here is my finished pattern piece, like this. Next, I'm going to cut out my fabric. So this little bandana is going to be lined, so I need to have two sides, two sets of fabric. So for my first set of fabric, I have this little patchwork yardage that I made. If you want to know how to do something like this, you can go ahead and check out our patchwork video. I can link that below. 
And then I'm gonna do a solid color on the other side of my bandana. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of that out. So when it comes to grain lines on my bandana piece, you kind of have two options. I wouldn't ignore the grain line altogether. I would either use this central line or this long edge. I wanna take advantage of all three of these fabrics and those colors. So I am going to cut it out this way. But you can definitely play with fussy cutting if you're working with a print and getting, you know, if there's like a beautiful little flower and you want that to be pictured kind of centrally, you can play around with that. That's the beauty of these really small projects. I love doing a patchwork version of this project because it's such a good way to bust all of those scraps. Once your fabric is all cut, you can also cut your ribbons. This is how you're gonna fasten the bandana to your head. I'm just gonna use twill tape. I like twill tape. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to cut my twill tape pieces to about 12 inches. You can certainly cut yours longer and then trim them once you try it on. Because again, everyone's head, it's gonna be a little different. So two 12 inch strands. All right, we're done cutting. We can move on to sewing. Okay, so the first sewing step I'm going to do is I'm going to baste my ties on to one of my bandana pieces. And this is just gonna get centered on that little tiny end right there. And that one in place, and then this one, and we'll baste it on using an, a scant quarter inch seam allowance. If you're using a larger seam allowance, you can use a larger one than that. I would just say, you know, an eighth of an inch smaller than whatever your final seam allowance is. Now, I am going to assemble my bandana. So I'm going to place my bandana pieces, there's two of them, right sides together. And I'm gonna just put a couple pins in place, make sure that those ties are hidden away in the center. We don't want them getting caught in one of our seams. Now that everything is all pinned up, we are going to sew. So you need to keep in mind that we need to leave some sort of opening so that we can turn everything right side out. So I'm choosing to leave my opening right here on my longest edge and I'm gonna do that uh, roughly in the center. This isn't a super large piece, so you don't need to leave a huge opening. I would say like about the width of your hand will do the trick. Okay, once you are all done doing your sewing, we wanna do a little bit of clipping because we have quite a few corners here and we want those corners to be nice and clean looking. So I'm just gonna clip off those corners. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's all going to be hidden anyway. <sighs> okay, now the magic moment. We're gonna turn it all right side out. You can use your ties to help you pull everything too little handles. You can use a point turner to turn that point out. You can also use a straight pin to help you kind of pull it out. Like so. Then we are going to give it a good healthy press. So normally when I'm pressing something like this, I like to try and get the seam a little bit open. Like so. So nice and flat. And then I will crisp up that edge. And what that is helping me do is it's helping me get my stitch line as close to that edge as possible. Make sure that you're pressing the edges of that little opening in. Uh, don't worry about what's gonna happen with those. We are just gonna edge stitch all the way around this and it'll capture it and close everything up nice and neatly. Now we're going to edge stitch around the entire perimeter of our bandana. When I'm edge stitching on something like this, I always like to make sure that I am choosing a nice hidden spot. So I am going to start my edge stitching down here because this is gonna be kind of tucked behind my ear. Go all the way around. And then when I get back to it and back stitch over that starting point, that not as cute looking starting point with the back stitching, it's gonna be hidden when you're wearing it. And I am going to edge stitch at about an eighth of an inch. 
you just want to make sure that you're choosing a seam allowance that is smaller than the seam allowance you used or else you're not going to be able to close up um, that opening you have. In this case, I think the narrower the edge stitch, the better. All right, here is our finished product. It is so cute. I love this project. And if you aren't feeling convinced already, which would be weird, you should be convinced. It's very cute. There are a ton of ways that you could customize this project and totally make it your own. You could do patchwork like I did. You can play with lots of fun prints and feature prints in a fun way, like how you are centering a print. I think like a very bold floral would be really great centered on the bandana. You can also incorporate different kinds of trims, um, either by what you're using for your tie fastening, but you could also use lace trim around the border, um, cute little pom-poms. I mean, really the possibilities are endless. And what's great is that you don't need a ton of yardage. It could be that trim that you have only one yard of in your stash and you don't know what to do. You have tons of options, contrasting, top stitching thread, you name it, you can really have fun with this and take it a bunch of different directions. Well, I love making these videos and I love playing with no pattern sewing projects. But I wanna know down in the comments, can you tell me what other no pattern projects you would like to see in the future? Cause I would love to make more for you. Let me know. When you join, you get access to our entire catalog of over 200 modern sewing patterns, from quick and easy tops to wear anywhere dresses to tailored blazers and pants. We help you to design and craft your own wardrobe. Membership also gets you access to Design Your Wardrobe, our popular course that walks you through a process for laying out a seasonal wardrobe that you can sew. Plus, membership includes our library of dozens of sew along classes. And best of all, access to our private sewing community, including tens of thousands of members, where you can post projects, ask questions, and even find sewing friends near you. I hang out there all the time along with Haley and the rest of the team here at Seamwork, and I'd love for you to join me. YouTube subscribers get half off a Seamwork membership, making it an incredibly good deal. To sign up, just click the button on screen or the link in the description below to claim your offer. I hope you loved this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.